Airbus's newest entry into the A320neo family is their XLR, touted for extra long-range missions and will eventually enter into service. However, what it has been is delayed. But what has caused such a new plane to see a delay in its entry into service? Tune in to find out. The Airbus A321 XLR was announced at the 2019 Paris Air Show, but before we begin, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Your support is greatly appreciated in helping grow globetrotting. During the first week of the XLR's launch, it made an unmistakable impact, with actually hundreds of commitments from customers worldwide, proving that even despite the existence of the LR, a further developed A321neo into an XLR was indeed something airlines did truly want. It's a sector of the market that is so critically important, but also one that has been left unfilled, as airlines retire their aircraft and Boeing, the American aircraft manufacturer, does not offer up a replacement for their aging 757s and 767s. It is therefore becoming Airbus's market to lose, and providing carriers what they want with attractive delivery rates really has made it hard to turn down, and for Airbus has meant their A321neo program has been highly, highly successful. Initially, it was expected that the A321XLR would enter into service sometime in 2023, that being next year. However, this calendar year, 2022, towards the midway point, the aircraft program was dealt a significant blow with a delay to its entry into service. Why is this though? Well, it's centering around fire safety concerns. This is an aircraft that is going to be the longest range narrowbody in the world, and that comes with challenges. For the XLR, it's in the form of adding a new fuel tank that will make all of this possible and mean that the range can be achieved. However, as Airbus makes these changes, they were met with some very valid concerns from the EASA, the European Aviation Safety Agency, and those responsible for approving aircraft and just generally validating the process are adequate at, say, manufacturers and companies. Think of them as your FAA, but for Europe. They oversee the standards in place, and these regulators want Airbus to try and eliminate the risk of fire from the extra fuel tank. If there were to be a braking failure, or what has been described as a worst-case scenario, the aircraft sliding off the runway, there would be a risk that the rear centre tanks aboard the XLR would be susceptible to obviously a fire risk. Ideally, you want that risk prevented, given the possibility of fire spreading into the cabin and impacting the passengers on board. Now, those two specific examples, being the brake failure and also sliding off the runway, were the examples given by Airbus and the EASA. Of course, there are potential other scenarios where the aircraft could be impacted. The thing is, though, there are actually subsequent implications to the aircraft itself that can come from these concerns put forward by the governing body. Any modification that would need to take place towards the rear fuel tanks does mean that extra weight will need to be added. So again, while this isn't new to us, it was always going to be a risk, but obviously it can impact the performance of the XLR, depending on the changes that need to be made, depending on what is approved and so forth. But we shouldn't have to worry too much with industry analysts at Bloomberg and more assuring that the implications will be very minor and that the performance of the aircraft shouldn't be drastically affected. The reality is though, you do never truly know until the aircraft is firmly approved and flying with customers. It can also be confirmed that the aircraft will not enter into service until 2024. This is a year later than initially expected, and a massive blow for Airbus in the program that they would have ideally hoped to have cleared by 2023 and seen it flying with carriers then. However, as always said, safety does come first, and if that unfortunately means delays to the aircraft, but resulting in a safer plane, that's always taking precedent. And for the European aircraft manufacturer, well, they're not alone in experiencing delays to aircraft programs, with Boeing still going through a lengthy process with their 777X aircraft, awaiting certification and delivery that will likely, once completed, be five years after the initial estimated entry into service date, which is a sizable delay. And seemingly, it feels like every aircraft program is facing delays or minor issues. That is the reality of the industry, but like I'll always say, and like I just mentioned before, safety is always the number one priority. And if that means there is a delay of 6 to 12 months, like we've witnessed with the XLR, then that's something that just has to be accepted. 
Thank you very much for watching. Do let us know below if you're excited for the A321 XLR's debut into the aviation scene in 2024. Thank you very much for watching, and we will indeed see you next time right here on Globetrotting at DJ's Aviation. Oh,